Hello again and welcome to our channel. We are still taking deeper dives into topics of cybersecurity. And in this video, we will talk about smartphones. We all have them, we all know and love them. But what should I be aware of in the case of cybersecurity? I still talk to Alexander Naval about this. And my first question is, so my PC or my laptop is normally uh, protected by a firewall or virus software. Is something like a firewall actually in a device like this? Yes, um, it's a little bit different, but somehow it's the same because also on your device is a system, an operating system working and also we have somehow the same components. It's a little PC if you want to make it in easy words. Mm -hmm. And also therefore our apps for antivirus available, you should install them. And also take a look that you have always the, the right, the current patch level, um, all the applications, um, also the operating system, keep it up to date because they are really critical uh, vulnerabilities, which is really easy, uh, when it is really easy to attack your device. So this is really important. Keep the newest version on here. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't depend if it's an Android device or it's an iOS. Uh, for both, you need that. What can I actually do to protect my data on my phone better? Is there some tips you can give us? Yes. Um, one thing is about, as I mentioned, patch management. Mm -hmm. Patch everything. We make automatic patching on. Um, the other thing is not about it's somehow hurt sustainability if you think about that because if you get an, a phone a smartphone after a couple of years from a security perspective you get no new security patches oh, yeah. from the vendor uh, side so the problem is you cannot use it furthermore because security is not provided as this is more or less an economic perspective not a sustainability uh, thing because they could provide more patches, longer time patches for devices, but then you earn not the same amount of money, so they decide not to do that. So also there comes also another perspective sustainability in that, in this discussion. But from a security perspective, it's clear you have to change, you have to buy a new one mm -hmm. to have the same level of security uh, if you are in the end of life of security patches. It's actually a very interesting uh, point because I always give my old phones to my son or my grandpa and they use it and yes, no problem. about it. Then uh, your child has the problem. <laughs> but if you, if you let them in, in your private um, uh, VLAN, then you have a problem because they are in your network. And yeah, if you are. have, <laughs> yes, and if you have a compromised device, it's like in, in a castle, you bring the air taker in the castle and, and then the door is open. close the door. Yes, but the air taker is inside. So it's somehow a problem. Oh, yeah. But I know many people use oh. out of time, uh, end of life devices. So this is really a problem. Yeah, interesting. Um, so my next question would be um, the topic of online banking. Mm -hmm. A lot of us do it. Is this fine on the phone or what? Uh, should I be aware of when doing online banking on a smartphone? You should think about that you have two devices at least. So I would prefer, I would suggest use your the login page, the URL you want to type in is on your PC, on your laptop, on your mm -hmm. tablet, whatever. And the phone is for where you get the push tone or something like mm -hmm. this. So you have a distance between two different uh, devices. Why? If you think, no problem, I can do it in the browser on my phone and I can do the push down. Of course, I get it also on my phone. So why should I use two devices? There's a uh, the reason for that is, if you are hacked, if your device is hacked somehow, then the attacker has both. Exactly, he has yeah. a push down and also um, he has the side where he can manipulate everything. So this is not, good if you do it from one device. So two devices make sense. I yes. Keep an eye on that. Um, my next question is, can you do like something? There's always the fight between Apple and Android and people keep saying Apple is more safe or Android is safer. Is there anything safer than the other or are they actually equal? Hard to say because in, in uh, uh, a couple of years ago, everybody would say Apple is more secure than Android. But it's only like a perspective if you say, okay, yes, from a statistical point of view, there are less vulnerabilities somehow, but do both 
the iOS and also the Android do the same also to looking into a system to mm -hmm. have the same level or as a marketing strategy, we don't know. But if you see nowadays, you have almost the same level about vulnerabilities. Every time you see really serious um, hacks, serious vulnerabilities also on iOS. Mm -hmm. So this is more or less, I think about what was more prominent, what was more used. So Windows on, on a PC level is more used than uh, Mac OS. So this means what is more interesting for the attacker. For the hackers, yeah. But to make it clear, it's somehow the same because you can use somehow the same attack vectors for both. Yeah, so you can still decide what you prefer yeah. most. Test it out by yourself. Use, if you can, use an iPhone or an, an Apple device, also Mac is okay, and use a Windows-based machine or an Android and go to the same page, web page, shopping, or also if you want to do booking your vacation time in some nice country or something, it could happen that you get different prices because- Oh, interesting. macOS, this is more the topic of AI, macOS is somehow you have more money from a human perspective, so you get higher prices. So also this is interesting, not a security topic, but interesting to see. That's very interesting. You can do I it by yourself. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and also the time is interesting when you are surfing a, oh, a web page. Interesting. If you book your, your vacation, use an Android phone. <laughs> From the interesting. I never knew that. That's very interesting, actually. So uh, my, my next question is actually, uh, how easy is it to get access to this? What would you need when I left my phone here? What would you need to get access to this? I have a passcode, I have face ID, so actually everything I think is secure is in place, but is it actually secure? Yes, so let's start with a physical uh, attack. So physical attack means I have direct access to your phone, so I can see if you are have some fingers on your display and I try to figure out what's your uh, passphrase. So this could be an attack. Um, also, if you say, okay, I'm, I'm a remote guy, it doesn't depend where I'm located. So it could be that I trick you while you're on a mail or something, that you download an application, mm -hmm. an app on your phone, which is malicious. I don't use uh, the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. I place it on a web server and give you the link to that and you surf, uh, you, you go to this web page, download it, install it. And then it could be that I have full access, depends on the malware, full access to your device. So this is from this perspective easy, uh, but it, it's dependent on your awareness level. And also, um, do you know not using a web page for downloading an app? Mm -hmm. and, and on the other side, if your system is not up to date, it's not patched on an app level or also on the on the OS level, on the operating system. Also, there are tools. It's really easy. Everybody can do that mm -hmm. uh, with Metasploit or something like this. You have payloads, you have everything in place. You use it and then you are on the device. So it depends. Okay. Case by case. <laughs> your uh, device updated and uh, be aware yes. of phishing. We also have a video on that topic actually on the channel. Um, so I'm already on my last question and this is um, about public networks. So we are right now in a hotel in a conference room and they have a public network. Is it actually safe to use those public networks or should I constantly avoid those? Avoiding is I think not, pr uh, not possible. Mm -hmm. but. You have to think about your serious the different risks. So this is all about awareness. So, so first of all, I would suggest is that you go directly in a VPN, virtual private network, that the provider of the network cannot read your data in clear tracks. So this is encrypted. Mm -hmm. So this is important. And on the other side, you don't know who is the provider. If you say like here in the hotel, a hotspot, what? can the provider of the hotspot see? Have mm -hmm. we some locking mechanism? Can he see all my passwords going through the system? Uh, or if you think about and um, you are somehow in a cafeteria or you are um, want to fly, you are on an airport and head tickets, and from an air ticket, it's easy. You provide a, a VLAN ID, which is somehow the same. 
telecom or you say mm -hmm. it's the name of the airport everybody will connect to that and you can man in the middle see everything and here's also important everything has to be encrypted so i'm from my perspective i don't do online banking or critical let's say from a risk perspective critical things on a open vlan um but surfing normal surfing not clicking on links this could be <laughs> some drive-by download um but normal surfing is possible so so i should just be aware what i'm actually just doing in a public network it's more or less safer if i just do normal things and probably not uh, online banking for example <laughs> yes it's safer but you don't know it's like a black box you don't yeah, yeah, know of course, yeah. to whom you speak what he can do with your data is it encrypted you can see on your browser for example but it could be that he also collects all your data also if it is encrypted and try to crack it afterwards so you have to think about what you want to do in in such a kind of network risk management <laughs> yes it's it's risk management human risk management yeah if you want i to get say. it I get and it. you need the awareness so that you can think about the different risks yeah you have just to be aware of those topics yes. and i think that there this deep dive actually helps to get awareness for these topics because i never thought that deeply about this i'm so thankful to have this talk with you i hope you got some new information as well if you are now interested in studying cybersecurity, then check out our website iu.org or um, if you have some more questions just put them down in the comments and also have a look on the other videos on our channel and see you next time